Welcome everybody to NWSL Live. I am Jordan Angeli and I'm gonna be leading you through everything around the National Women's Soccer League. So the ins and outs on the field, off the field. And of course, if you know anything about me, you know that I can't do this by myself. So I have my friends, two experts in women's soccer. I have the former pro, Lori Lindsay, joining us. And then I also have our good friend, the founder of Equalizer Soccer, Jeff Kasup. What is going on, you guys? How are you? Fantastic. Good to be here again. We yeah. do. We made it through the first one. <laughs> well, here we are. It's yeah. Been, it's been so much fun. Uh, Lori, I'll start with you. How have you been? How has your week been? Did you have a good Mother's Day? Great. I mean, I'm not a mother, but um, it was a great Mother's but Day. Got a mother. A, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Three. And so, um, yeah, got to chat with them. And it's been a wonderful week. Tons of hiking here in Iowa and sightseeing and enjoy, enjoying nature. So, oh, I love that. Yeah, it's been good. Jeff, did you have a good week? Did you have your you almost have a mother in your family? I know your your wife is expecting, but yeah, not quite yeah. her first Mother's Day. Not quite. So, uh, <laughs> early, early celebration. Yeah, no, it's good. We're uh, excited about that. And then, uh, yeah, it's finally it's like 70 here. So it's finally like sort of summer after it almost snowed Sunday. So yeah, <laughs> feeling good about the end of the week. That is, I think all of us are ready for that. Just it feels like maybe things are changing, right? Bundesliga is back this weekend. NWSL teams, some of the teams are able to participate in individual trainings. It's so mm -hmm. close. We're, we're feeling like it's going in the right direction, right? So I think uh, that makes us all really excited and hopeful that there will be an NWSL season this year. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see players back and, and obviously in their own quadrants and yeah. Some <laughs> Yeah. Um, so last week we talked about who the unsung hero of 2019 is, and we're gonna we're gonna stay with 2019 this week as well. But in our best of category, we're gonna talk to, about something else that makes all of us smile. I know it does. It really makes everybody smile, unless you're the goalkeeper who sees the ball go in the back <laughs> of her not too many times. We are going to go through the best goals of the 2019 season. Now, before we each give our own picks, I want to know from you guys, and we'll start with you, Lori, what was your criteria in trying to choose which goals you were going to choose? Because there were plenty of goals to choose from. Well, one, I wasn't totally strict on my criteria. I didn't say like, these are the factors that have to be at play. But, uh, you know, last year was an interesting year with the World Cup, a lot of players coming and going. We saw other players step up. So for me, it was really about finding one, um, what goals I enjoyed because, which was which was challenging in, in general because there were so many great ones. You could, if right. you're just going off of that, then it's like, oh goodness, that's going to be a disaster because we could be here all day. But, um, but then also I was looking for what time of the season was it? Um, and was it an impactful goal? What did it mean for that team? What did it mean for the player? Um, so those are kind of the, the different criteria that I was looking at. I love that, Jeff, for you. What, how are you picking the goals? Yeah, so I guess I admittedly went a little hipster. I won't give it away, but um, yeah, I guess it's not if you say it though, right? So, um, but you know, I looked at so many great individual goals and I think um, I actually had a hard time kind of narrowing those down. Um, so try to think a little bit outside the box and maybe not so much the, you know, the great volley as much as it was how well things were put together. Right. Okay. Well, what we all did I is like we, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we all did is we get, got to choose two goals. So that's a total of six goals that we're going over out of, I don't know off the top of my head, how many goals were scored in NWSL season <laughs> last year, but a we lot. are going to start a, a lot, a lot. Uh, <laughs> And we're going to start with Lori. Your first goal, you're going to go with who? Kristen Hamilton. All right. Week, week 12, 
So uh -huh. it was the beginning of July and she actually had, um, which is, I mean, this goal in itself is just brilliant. Just the confidence that she displays right here in front of the goal um, to beat the Houston defender. But at the same time, she had a four goal performance in this game. So we could have picked three others in this game. <laughs> um, and at the same time, this was, you know, this isn't at the end of the season. This is um, towards the beginning of July, again, week 12. But I think what stood out to me the most is, again, four goals in this one game, but also Kristen Hampton really had a breakout season this year at a time when her North Carolina team really needed her to because they had so many players um, absent from the, the season for a good portion because of the World Cup. She rose to the occasion, had been kind of um, an up-and-down player, a player that was coming off the bench. And then to put a four-goal performance at a time when the majority, besides the U.S. players, all of the other World Cup players, I believe, were back playing. And so, and that's a lot of time when you have a younger player, a player that doesn't have a ton of experience in this league, I think you start to see when those bigger name players come back, sometimes it can be difficult for them to continue to perform at the level they had prior. And I think this just showed that um, she was ready to make a statement in the league and was excited to have um, support back on, even more support back on the field, yeah. but again, still playing at a high level. And so that's what came to I mind. I just love the turn. The turn oh, is so brilliant. silky. Yeah. Oh my and gosh. I'm telling you, I think it was the second goal of this game. It was just like total uh, North Carolina through and through. It was a ball played from the left side in the back. She mm -hmm. made, Kristen Hamilton makes a perfect run, gets in behind, and it's like a brilliant time goal and I originally wanted to go with that but then it's like okay you just keep scoring throughout the game I was like <laughs> just go <laughs> yeah. well it's funny you mentioned that because we're not going very far for Jeff's first pick here uh we are gonna stay with the courage Jeff why don't you talk us through your first pick yeah so this Dabinia goal week 13 um and you can see the build up here even more so in the the replay but Dabinia here gets his ball on the, the left side and has to do a good amount of individual work here just to retain it. Um, and what I love about this goal and why I picked it is nine passes from retaining possession. It's, you know, from basically their own 18 and then Dabinia here comes in and finishes after she obviously helped uh, open up the space to create this. So uh, nine passes from here from, from Denise O'Sullivan kind of breaking three, breaking free from pressure. Um, and then, you know, really this is, 70 yards up the pitch and a, a full switch of the pitch. So it's, it's a great team goal. And I don't think those get highlighted enough um, mm -hmm. as much as I love kind of some of the, the highlight real stuff. This stuff usually doesn't necessarily make the highlight real. And, and really though, you talk about team goals, a one-time cross here from Merritt Mathias and then a really nice finish. Um, this was, you know, front to back, every player. Um, and I yeah. think those are really special to be a part of when you're on a team and, and you can put that together. Yeah, I have to rewind this a little bit because, Lori, you have to appreciate this run. Davinia starts in the middle of the pitch and watch her run here to open up the space where she then ends up getting the ball. Ah, that oh, starts it all off. Yeah, and this is, as I say, this, this goal, I like this pick from Jeff because it does exemplify how – North Carolina plays and they get players involved. I mean, this is Mary Mathias, they're right back getting into the attack, but it really does start from Dabinia. And that's what makes them so difficult to play against is you have players like Dabinia running out of the midfield and you have defenders that are having to make sure their communications on point, making sure that they're tracking players. And honestly, when you have world-class players at every position on their team, yeah. Good luck. And I mean, that's what, <laughs> what, what that's actually what happened. I mean, a lot of teams were like, good luck. So yeah, <laughs> we yeah. need more. <laughs> Absolutely. When I look at that goal too, I love Dabinia's finish because she just like, I, I think she was so worried about scoring the goal that she didn't even put her feet down. She just fell afterwards. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. just she do fell it all. Into the goal. Okay. Just do yeah. it all. Okay. Um, I'm going different team, you guys. I'm getting out of there. I am going, I'm calling this the Chicago scramble. <laughs> <laughs> so this was an important goal in my eyes because it's early in the season, only week two, but this game was crazy. Do you guys remember this game? It was a 4-4 draw. Lori, I believe you were calling it. Mm -hmm. And I picked this goal because I thought it was important for Chicago, which kind of shows who they are, their grit, what they're all about. It was in the 77th minute. Chicago had taken the lead early and then went down with two straight goals from 
Portland at home. And this goal, the number of players for Chicago that touched it in such a tight area, but it was a sacrifice by Julie Ertz. It was this touch there by uh, Va- excuse me, by Vasconcelos, who I think actually – does a really good job of touching that ball. And then Sam Kerr's movement. You know, everybody's looking at Sam Kerr. Where is she? What is she doing? We have to watch her. And her movement off the ball to open up on the back really allowed for the team to then open up that space and for Vasconcelos to then score. So I think it was not only the team effort, but it was the grit of Chicago showing that, okay, we're going to, we're going to fight this year. Right. And not that they don't always fight, but they were determined to be a team who pushed past what they had done before. And I think that little chunk kind of shows you that they were not going to give up. So that was my first one. You like the Chicago scramble? (laughs) Yeah. And, and funny enough, uh, funny enough too, is that, you know, North Carolina, the team buildup that you just highlighted, Jeff, and in that um, Chicago goal, I mean, both of those teams find, found their way into the final. And I think that just proves that it really was a collective unit for both of those teams. And that game, I do remember calling it, and it was just goals galore. I was like, okay, well, yeah. it's just, yeah. everyone's just scoring, but uh, which is awesome. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think it set the tone uh, yeah. for both, for Chicago early on, for sure. Right. All right, we're staying with Chicago. Lori, your second pick of the best goals in 2019. Who are you going with? Well, Sam Kerr. I don't think you can. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think you can kind of have a best goal with Sam Kerr in the mix at least. And this is actually against North Carolina, so a little bit wild that these two teams are in the mix so much. But um, this was actually week five, so still – but I chose it because this was Sam's second goal of this game, and she single-handedly allowed her team to – or put the, her team on her shoulders to win this. And I think this is, it was just a fabulous touch to draw the defender in, takes it the other way. Um, and, then, and that's Ertig, who's an international defender for North Carolina, and she just, like – buy so much time for herself. And then you could see how important this goal was for her with the celebration here at the end. But at the same time, I mean, I think this just set the tone again for Chicago early on. So it wasn't like it meant a ton because we still had the World Cup coming and people were going to lose players. Um, but at the same time, it allowed Sam Kerr to continue to show how important she was and just the understanding of how quick that throw is and give oh. – North Carolina, in my opinion, a little taste of their own medicine, which is like quick restarts and go after them and end up winning this yeah. game, which yeah. I actually take back what I just said. I think this was a huge win because teams needed to build up some points prior to the World Cup. And I think that this allowed um, Chicago to weather a little bit of a storm midseason yeah. and then get back on track. The goalkeeper didn't even move. <laughs> like that's how good that shot was from Kerr. Like, she couldn't oh, even see it. <laughs> and I was calling that too and I, could, I couldn't believe it I was just like this this is wild because it was yeah. a pretty like slow game for both teams and then all of a sudden it came to life and like Oof. Sam Kerr came to life boy, yeah. boy did it all right uh mm-hmm. Lori you're done you've got two picks there <laughs> you got Kristen Hamilton Sam Kerr those are your top two two good goal scorers in general in NWSL for Jeff you get one more shot at this your second of your best goals here talk us through this one Okay, we got a fresh team here. So uh, this is Portland's goal, week 15. Starting in the back, you can see a little bit similar to the Courage goal, I'll admit, but just how quickly the Thorns, and this is Tobin Heath on the left side, like Dabinia was uh, in that previous goal, Midge Purse to, to Haley Rasso. So a, a couple things here. The Similar to the Courage goal that we just looked at, but the time here elapsed is five seconds or so, six seconds to you know, get down the field from essentially your own 18 to cut through three lines of Houston, Midge Purse with a nice run. And then I think the awareness too from Purse that keepers come out, you know, defenders are scrambling. I think a lot of players shoot there um, almost, you know, made to look like a no look pass. It wasn't, but uh, the awareness that she had a teammate in the middle of the park for essentially a tap in uh, just another really spectacular team goal. And this run right here by Sinclair is, again, very similar to that run we saw from Dabinia, and it opens everything up. It it pulls defenders and spaces them out. This is 
I like this pick, Jeff. I like both of your picks. I mean, both of you, both of you went with very different um, approaches, right? A little bit more individual efforts for Lori and team efforts a lot from Jeff. But I don't know. It makes me happy. They're all really good goals. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Laura? Oh, well, I mean, it's kind of like what we were talking about a little bit earlier is that there were so many great goals. I mean, mm -hmm. listen, you still have your, your last pick, Jordy, but yeah. I mean, Heather Riley scoring in the final, right? And her last um, goal of her career. I mean, we could have picked all of these things, but I think yeah. we were all kind of looking for something that we either felt like set the tone or was really kind of like a difference maker for the team itself or that right. individual. And that's kind of where I went with my last one. I think when we think of goal scorers last year too, Kristen Press, her name is on top of that list. So I called this one Press Reverse. You guys, I was really into the naming of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this, this goal was in week three. So uh, this was also one that was early in the season, but goodness gracious, this touch by Kristen Press. When I first watched it, because I remember watching this game, I thought, no way did she do this on purpose. And then I watched it again and I was like, yes, she did. She absolutely did it on purpose. She saw that the defenders were on her opposite side so she wanted to bring it back centrally and then she used the door ski as a shield for Kottmeyer and shielded her and that little bounce right before there's so many little nuances about that goal that I I couldn't not choose it it just was too good are you yeah. kidding did you yeah. score a goal like that Lori <laughs> Jordan <laughs> you know I did not okay let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> I would just let balls bounce off me and hope they win it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's good. That reminds me of the Kristen Hamilton goal and just the composure in and around the box to be able to bring the ball down, kind of a, the understanding of where um, each of those players is on the field and where the defenders are, and then to be able to slot it home. It's yeah. just unbelievable. I like this comment from Joseph saying, all of Press's goals are always so impressive. She is so great. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, the other goal that I was kind of going in between was A-Rod when she got the ball and she dribbled the whole field. And I, <laughs> yeah. guys, I, I, There's I, a few I, of those from A-Rod. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Well, you should be I, doing this every game. What are you doing? I, I named that one A-Rod, or I named that one, she could go all the way, Rod. I mean, <laughs> look at me. No, I'm glad he didn't choose that then. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, okay. hi. Oh, hi. I don't yeah. remember that, <laughs> that game. <laughs> I, this is fun, right? And this is what scoring goals and watching NWSL, this is how it makes us feel. We love this game. We love this league. And uh, there's some good comments here about goals that other people thought – Maybe could have should have been in here. I know that we had a couple of people on Twitter. Uh, Zip Locker said Rose Lavelle's winner versus the Courage, and then uh, Sheely's said Tobin Heath's back heel versus Sky Blue. Mm. Yeah, so it wasn't just that back heel. I thought of too. It was that for the one against the Pride where she almost brought it behind her back leg. Mm -hmm. Like get out of here, Tobin Heath. Yeah. Um, yeah, so many goals. But what I think we should do, you guys, is tweet out who who had the best pick, so you, people can agree with Lori, Jeff, or myself. Or they could choose other, and they can show us what goal that they <laughs> like. How about that? Perfect. Okay, let's get some interaction here. We'll be tweeting that out after the show here tonight. But that concludes. I love this section. I love debating you guys about these uh, different topics. The best goals was absolutely fun. Really good to relive those moments. And we're moving right along. This next section is one that we all agreed on had to be something that we did every single week. Why you play. Each week we're bringing you an NWSL star, a player who works tirelessly to improve her craft and grinds throughout the whole entire season to get better. As always, we want to hear from you guys. Who do you guys want to hear from? You can submit your questions right now for our guest today, but we, we also want to know who you guys want on next week. So let us know that in the comments or on Twitter. This week's guest, you guys, is no stranger to NWSL. She is a third round draft pick in the 2016 NWSL draft, and she has played every season in her career for her hometown of Chicago and those Red Stars. Uh, I think she's a player that if you ask her to jump, she'll probably say, how high? 
Sarah Gordon's resilience and persistence has allowed her to continue to grow through her, the entirety of her NWSL career. And we are going to bring her in right now and welcome Sarah Gordon to Hi, our NWSL Live. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? Oh, we are doing great. What's what's life like in Chicago right now? You know what? The weather is finally getting a little bit warmer. As you can see, I'm outside. So just trying to soak all of that up right now. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's nice. Uh, meanwhile, I'm having like tornado weather here in Iowa. <laughs> so it's like, am I going to be taking cover? Not quite, but it was being oh stormy God. before. But yeah. Okay. So it was, it was storming here today, but it, it just cleared yeah. up finally. So it's nice outside. Awesome. Well, thanks for jumping on. It's um, great to have you. And I mean, I'll go first. So one, um, congrats on your season last year. Undoubtedly your best season in, in the WSL. And unfortunately, not the result you'd won in the final, but um, congrats on getting to the final as well to you and the Red Stars. Um, but what I want to know about is... Um, I was reading about an article about you and like preparing for the mental side of the game and you credited this past season to kind of working on that, um, meditating different aspects of the uh, mental side that you wanted to improve. Can you dive into that a little bit more? Yeah. So I think like as a rookie, I just kind of felt like um, I didn't feel like I was good enough to be there. Uh, I didn't feel like I could really compete. And it was just like a ball of anxiety every time I was on the field, even at practice. So, um, yeah, so I think my first two years were kind of like that. And, and finally, I just took a look at myself and was like, what do I need to do to get better? And I realized what I really needed to do was improve my mentality. So um, I've always been like a, a big reader of nonfiction books. So I started reading a lot about meditation and I was like, I just need to do this. So now it's been, I think like three years now, I've been meditating pretty much every day. Um, it's been the biggest change in my game. It just totally like helped me be present with whatever I was feeling, whether that was anxiety or fear. Um, it just helped me be present with it and just being present with those feelings helped me move past them and uh, really, you know, be able to take my game to the next level. Which, I mean, makes so much sense, especially when you're in the grind of the NWSL season. I don't think people understand, like, how long the season is, the intensity right. of the game. So it's just, like, the smallest little details, right, that separate you. So if you can get that edge then and be as consistent as possible, you're living proof here that um, that helps big time. So Exactly, yes. Yep. Sarah, I mean, you're you're basically born and raised Chicago, right? I mean, you, you've been in Chicago uh, and now as a pro and, and as an adult, obviously. I mean, what, you know, that's something really unique to be playing for your hometown sports team, essentially. Um, what What's that process been like? I mean, it seems like on and off the field with how much you're doing with the Red Stars, you know, that that you've really kind of embraced that. Um, I'm just wondering what that's like to to kind of be able to do that where, you know, it's a lifestyle as, as Jordan and Lori know, you can be kind of, um, you know, pulled to anywhere really. Yeah, I mean, it's special to have been here my whole life. Um, it's kind of crazy at the same time. I feel like growing up in the 90s, born in 92, you know, watching Michael Jordan and the Bulls bring home all that for our city. Mm -hmm. it's makes it even more special now to be playing for a pro team here and you know obviously women's soccer isn't the same as, as be playing for the, the bulls or in the nba <laughs> it'll have an impact on a lot of people and it's great to be able to you know show them on the field working hard that chicago you know that blue collar like you were talking about earlier the grit that chicago always has it's something it's a part of the character of the city and so to be able to represent that on the field and and try to bring some fun entertainment and, and proof of that to the community my family, my friends is really special for me. So you locked sorry. in on that. I was Go just going to say, you're probably locked in on that MJ documentary then. I'm oh guessing. my gosh, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> every Sunday, 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody. It's is. amazing. Every, I've never been so excited for Sundays. <laughs> I know, right? It's so great like to really see him behind the scenes. It's like, it's seeing like how much he pushed his teammates. It really is inspiring. Like Monday morning, my workouts are probably the best. Just from watching <laughs> that on Sunday night. <laughs> I love it. Jeff was mentioning you've played every game of your pro career. You went to college in 
at DePaul in yeah. Chicago as well. Uh, Erin Chastain was one of my coaches when I was okay. at Santa Clara, so I know okay. her very well. Uh, but you've played every game as a pro in Chicago. What's your cheering section look like? How cool is it that you can have people come and support you, uh, maybe even people that you've known for a long time? Yeah, um, my parents come out to every single game. My son has been in every single game. Um, but like, I don't get that much family that comes out. <laughs> But I do have friends who, you know, <laughs> come out when they can, which is awesome. Um, and then just like, it's like my hair, the per person that does braids my hair will come to my, like stuff like that. You know, people that I've known since college like to get out and support. So it's great. And I think like people that wouldn't usually like soccer, but knowing I'm from here and knowing who I am, try to show support to our team just because it's like they like me or what I'm about or they it helps get them into it really. Yeah. One of the things that I really like about you and your story, as I mentioned it in the lead in, right, is your persistence and your resilient and you're, you're gritty, right? You have that Chicago <laughs> grit to you, which is amazing. I, I want to know, and I think people are curious, everything hasn't been easy, right? I, take us to a difficult moment and maybe what it was within you that just that helped you decide to keep pushing through or to choose maybe that path that was a little bit more difficult, but you knew that it would lead and help you get to where you are today. Well, I would say the most obvious difficult moment in my soccer career was in college when I got pregnant. Um, I was 20 years old and I still had years of college soccer ahead of me and just kind of like the people around me, nobody really was like, you can do this. It was more like, you're an idiot. Like your life is over. But for me, I kind of thrive off the whole, you can't do this, people telling you that. So it was an easy decision for me to continue to play soccer. But the hardest moment is kind of what for me, like mentally was what we were talking about before, being a rookie, being a second year, not getting much playing time, not believing in myself, being like, I don't deserve to be here. And like for the first time in my career, my speed wasn't going to get me through it. And I actually, it was actually a moment where I was like, okay, Sarah, you're a single mom. This isn't paying you enough. Like, are you going to commit to this? Like, are you going to do the work mentally, physically, or it's time to hang up the boots and get a real job and provide? So that was the real hardest moment because it, I just kind of felt so like, uh, you know, unsupported and confused. And, and obviously I made the decision to stick with it, which I am glad I did, but that was the most difficult moment for me. And that was in season two? When yeah, you had I mean, that, my, yeah. The first, my first and second season, even up until last year, I was always like, what am I doing? It's hard to go from being the star of a team to being not getting playing time. And that's hard for anyone. And, you know, we all go through that in our career, of course, um, at some point, probably, unless you're, well, no, even Michael Jordan went through it. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I think that's always an important um, point to, to make and reiterate because I think a lot of times people think it's just kind of like this path for everyone to success, right? And I mean, we all have seen like, you know, the beams that are like the ups and downs, but it's so true because it looks different at each stage. And it's kind of like always finding those little different twists and turns that are going to separate you or elevate your game. And in, in terms of our career, so um, and sticking though with the Chicago theme, uh, so last October you're preparing to go play North Carolina in the championship, but also uh, the teachers union in Chicago go on strike, and you commit to being in solidarity with them. How did that come about? Is activism been um, part of you? Like, how did you get involved? Um, I mean, I totally agreed with what the teachers were doing. It was so hard on a ton of parents here, on the kids, of course, because it's like a lot of Chicago parents are have working jobs. You know, they're still working now, which we won't even get into. I don't know how they're teaching their kids now because it's so difficult to teach your kid during this quarantine. But it's like the strike is going on and they want better for our kids here in Chicago. And I'm like... How can I not agree with this? Like, it is hard to manage getting ready for this championship, but it's like, it's even harder when there's one teacher in a class of 25 people every day for eight months with no AIDS, kids that need AIDS, you know, kids with ADD or whatever it may be, kids that need help. 
And we don't, we're not giving our kids that if we're not supporting our kids, our future, what are we doing here? So for me, I'm just like, these things, I get emotional about it. I'm like, we have something has to be done. So we would like drive around going to practice. There'd be teachers on the corners and it'd be like, honk if you agree. So of course me and Gaden are like hanging out the window, honking and agreeing. It was a crazy time, but it's like, God, I, I can't, I have to support these teachers for pushing for better for our kids, for like, for the kids that we had, they're not, not even their own kids. So, yeah. Sorry, you said your son's at, at the games often, or maybe all of them. I mean, is, is, is he kind of processing what you're doing out on the field? Um, you know, he loves soccer and he loves to be at absolutely everything. Um, and he just thinks it's normal life, you know. He's probably <laughs> his parents they were professional athletes, they're professional soccer players. So he he's not yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We gotta know about these new kits. First off, Chicago Red Stars are just crushing it with the kits you guys have. But these hometown kits, it's gotta be extra special for you. Yeah, I mean, I obviously I am biased. I think we have the best jersey in Chicago for sure, but in all of soccer, it's just so <laughs> it's like really special to have actual kits that have the city on them. And it's nice that we're the Red Stars. We have the flag literally in our name, but it's like we have the skyline, we have the community, so everyone right. can feel so represented, not only by our jerseys, but also by like we were talking about before how we our style of play, our grit, how we work on the right. field as well. When you saw those those new jerseys for the first time before the launch this year, what what, what did they make you feel? Because it, explain to everybody a little bit more about what the actual detail is within the jerseys. Yeah, so um, in the, the blue part of the jersey is actually every community in Chicago in small, like it's written out. I think there's I think there's 72 communities. I should probably know this, I don't. But um, so it's like, I live in Humboldt Park, which is like the Northwest side. So it says Humboldt Park in really little letters and then it makes the stripe. And then on the back, there's obviously like a little bit of the skyline and that's also in, the, it says the communities on there. So everyone is like, it's just it's like a part of home. Mm. Yeah, that's great. That's a pr probably a pretty good lead in, Lori, to some questions you need to know because Sarah, <laughs> We've been talking about this a lot and we know we all love soccer, but like your fashion, <laughs> girl. Yeah, I'm thinking let's get the soccer questions out of the way and let's get fashion, okay? Because I I it's love fashion stuff. and I love thrifting and I'm like creeping on your Instagram and I see four dollar <laughs> four dollar pants and I almost fell over. And I'm like, I need to know about the four dollar pants and I need to know if you're into some thrifting and what the deal is. So um, give us all your secrets. Okay, so I <laughs> thrifter and like part of it. It, it really started because of like soccer salary, you know, not, not, not the same as other pro athletes who don't have to thrift. That's how it started. But it's like, I just, I love it. Like this jacket is thrifted. I'm literally like the other tabs on this computer are I'm bidding on things on the thrift store. I, I have a serious problem, but I, you know, when you go to a thrift store and you find something and, and like throwbacks are in vintage is in, and then it fits you perfect. And it's just like those pants that you're talking about. Those were the ones right there <laughs> yeah. and four dollars right I exactly mean, it's cheap fast it's fashion cool. yeah exactly. and you're like right it's good for the environment i mean we should all be thrifting we, we should all be thrifting it's Jefferson. so fun it's amen amen yeah. we'll take you through what, okay give us some give us some of the um the online stores that we should be bidding on stuff i'm with. not going to tell you <laughs> okay <laughs> You can okay. I, like your, I like your style in this regard and in general. Too. <laughs> I can't share, but they have designer stuff, and I'm like waiting for the bid to the auction oh to go gosh. for the last hour. Be, but, and they're bidding against you, so I, I understand. Okay, perfect. Her, her competitiveness does not end uh, when she right. crosses the white line. It's still going on. I'm so sorry. All the love and respect, but I can't share. No, oh, I, no fair enough. I, like I think it. that was the best answer you could have said. <laughs> I, I do want to ask, though, you also like your kicks. You have a lot of shoes. What's your go-to favorite shoes right now? What, what brand are you or um, oh. actual shoe are you wanting the most? 
Well, what shoe I really want that came out is the Jordan, the AJ ones, D Dior collab, which I probably Ooh. will never get because <laughs> they're very expensive. But um, obviously, like I'm a sneakerhead, so I have so many Jordans is what I usually wear. AJ ones, AJ threes, AJ fours. Yeah, yeah, love that. Um, it's fun talking fashion with you and all things Chicago. We've got a couple of questions still coming in here from uh, some of the viewers here. Let me see. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Joseph wants to know how ID camp was with the U.S. Women's National Team back last year. Um, ID camp was a good experience for me. I had never been to even like a youth US camp. So it was like my first time ever doing anything like that, which is crazy. And I feel like everyone there, like half of ID camp was college kids and the other half was NWSL girl, women, excuse me. Uh -huh. We're women now, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like everyone had been to camps before except for me, I was super nervous. But um, it was a really good experience just to be there, to be in the kit and like training in it um, and just like kind of seeing how I match up to people, um, other great players and seeing what I do need to work on if I do want to get to that level. Right. This next question from Bryce Van Velt, what are your goals for the upcoming season and what lessons did you take away from last season? That's a good question, Bryce. That's a good question. Um, so I think it's been hard to really stay focused on goals, just like being in quarantine for the last three months. And so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to plug in my computer. It's really out of bed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's been like a really difficult thing, honestly, staying focused on what I, I do want to get done. So right now, if you would have asked me three months ago, my goals are different than what they are right now, honestly. Right now, my goal is to stay in shape, to be ready whenever that time comes. And and really like in the off season before this all happened, I was working, um, one of my main goals was my speed, my first few steps. And so I really am trying to do things to keep that intact. And I think as long as I'm ready to go uh, uh, come our first day, I think I'll be good and, and I'll go from there as far as what my goals are. Yeah. Yeah, is, is Coach Omega still with you all? Um, yes, she is still with us and she texts me every single day and asks me how I'm feeling and to fill out our Fit for 90, which is like our online quiz on how our bodies are doing. So, yes. Okay, she okay definitely please. <laughs> yeah, tell her I said hello. I know her. She's fabulous. And I love um, when when she took over um, the fitness and strength conditioning with you all. I was like, yes, that's awesome. It's a yeah, great hire. Great. So. She's really great. Yeah, wonderful. The only thing I could hear from that whole thing that you just said is that you're trying, you're getting faster. And I'm thinking anybody from <laughs> NWS style that plays on a different team right now, is worried. he's worried. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the new goal. Just working on the strengths right now. You know, that's, yeah. keep, me, keep me motivated. <laughs> keep your strengths, that's your strengths, one. right? I love right. that. Um, Sarah, we're going to let you go with that. We know that you've been working hard during this quarantine and we appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time for NWSL Live today. Uh, you have been a fabulous guest and uh, we can't wait to go thrift shopping with you. <laughs> thank you for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, right. thank you Thanks, so Sarah. much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too, yeah. bye. Bye, Sarah. Bye. What a great conversation with her. And of course, we, we wish Sarah the best as she continues to navigate this time. And Listen. gosh... NWSL Live is going to need to go on the road and it's going to be behind the scenes like shopping. Okay. So I, I think that's great. And you know what? It's like be everyone gets $100 fun? and then who finds the best outfit within that money? Or even let's actually go like $25. <laughs> I was going to say, wow. I can do that. <laughs> Jeff's in. I'm, I'm, in. I'm excited. I, I think we should also just pick uh, different looks for each other that we can thrift. Sarah gets one of oh. us, and we just <laughs> go down the line. Exactly. Lori, are you calling dibs on Sarah picking your outfit? Yeah. <laughs> Especially uh, if she's doing great. bidding, and I want that leather ja jacket she had on, too. I'm like, yeah. give it. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, for you, what sticks out with that conversation with Sarah, just hearing her, what she's gone through, what she's overcome, but also her 
her awareness to continue to improve certain things about her game. Yeah, so much. I mean, certainly, you know, the mental side that she talked about, which I think gets gets overlooked um, at every level. And I think I'm glad that we had that question at the end about ID camp because I think it highlights, you know, I, I wanted to make sure we mentioned that because we talked about and she talked about some of her struggles and um, kind of even self doubts in those first pro years. And you look at now, I mean, three, four years in and, and in an ID camp for, for the U S women's national team. So I think, you know, we said this a little bit last week, but just kind of speaks to, you know, the opportunities that exist out there in the league. Yeah. Lori, for you, besides the $4 pants that you want. <laughs> I can't think of is- anything beyond that. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I think going off of what um, Jeff just said too, it is really important because I mean, I think they're, you know, it is it's such a tight league in terms of there's not a ton of turnover and the smallest things are separating players. And it's really difficult to get looks if you're looking to play at an even higher level than NWSL. But just within the league in, in general, it's, it's tough and you have to have something that's separating you. But I love I think Sarah is a, a great example of kind of like being able to take yourself and take a step back and say, like, OK, I'm not loving it. How I'm performing, I'm not even getting a ton of opportunity to perform. Where, what, why is that? And to be able to have that understanding at a young age and with not very much experience in the league to say, hey, actually, I'm not, um, it's my mental side. And so right. then to be able to kind of really hone in on that. And then to, to be able to take a few seasons to be able to, to do that and, and really like, get on a trajectory where she's been successful. And the last little thing I'll say is I think Chicago has done a fantastic job of that. Cause if you look across the board, I think that's why in this season they were so successful, successful as they have built up a core of players that have had four or five seasons in the league that took them a little bit. I mean, they were all quality players, but they've grown together. They've built this chemistry and then, I mean, this season, they just unleashed it. Actually, the last and few seasons, I've really seen even, yeah. even local players, too. I mean, a lot of local yeah, players. Yeah, exactly. Done that, so. mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, that was just a fun conversation. And I think one of the things that, gosh, every week I leave Thursday night and I'm just ready for NWSL to start back up. Uh, one of the things that we want to kind of end each show with is a little bit of a look around the league, at things that are happening You guys, I don't know if you saw this, so we're going to give a little love to Washington Spirit. We haven't talked about them in our first couple shows, so I'm going to show you guys this. This is Dorian Bailey. Have you all seen this? She's doing uh, a little bit of work here, but she stops the ball and stalls it on her foot, and she is even surprised herself. She couldn't believe that she did it. (laughs) <laughs> i love that it's hard to tell in the video but i love that like she's surprised yeah. I she is. <laughs> you'll have to go and find the video because she stalls it and her eyes just go boop like did i just do that and she looks straight at the camera it's so funny um so i loved that the other thing that i saw that i i really loved was this photo i mean mm, yeah how that's, cool that's... are you marta <laughs> that yeah, is, I, I, I will I will say Orlando looks like they're having some of the most fun in these individual <laughs> training sessions. It might partly be due to the weather, but at the same time, <laughs> there's like shenanigans Something, in there. Uh, I saw somebody, it just, it crept into my feed that somebody said that should be the new NWSL logo. So oh my gosh. maybe uh, shades and all. I mean, yeah, I'd wear a, that on a shirt. Let's, uh, I would totally wear <laughs> oh, for sure. on a shirt. Uh, it, the caption of it was shades on the pitch is a trend we support. And I mean, <laughs> she's just the coolest cat, you know, like Marta get only she can do that. Right. If I wore shades on the pitch, like get out. <laughs> People would be making fun of me for years, but Marta makes it look cool. Uh, a couple of looks around the league. Let's see if I can show you one more. Um, And this one I thought was really cool. I want to go down to Houston for this one because the Dash as well are, I have been able to participate in these uh, individual trainings, right? And so, sorry, I'm I'm also the producer of the show here. So I'm (laughs) I'm trying to find the stream. uh, 
show you guys this. So here, let me get this into the stream here. And this is really cool because if you know anything about Christy Mewis, she can score a good goal and she's bringing that upper 90 the whole entire time. Uh, and it's so fun to watch. Like I, I love that from her and just love seeing these players getting to get back to what they love to do and uh, giving us a little hope, right? Yeah. Jordy, was that um, multiple shots or is that just one that was like? It was a gift. So it was just oh, one. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. there's another one. I think those, I'm going to have to figure out how to get those so they're a little bit bigger when I do share them on the screen because there's another one of Michelle Prince and she's doing some fitness work and she outruns a drone like the drone didn't keep up with her so it's like <laughs> michelle prince is right here and the drone's like trying to catch up <laughs> oh, things that i never knew what that was like um jeff Lori, this has been so much fun thank you guys for joining thanks for giving us your best goals again we're gonna give you guys an opportunity to vote on who had the best goals so make sure you go over to twitter and look at that tweet if you have a better goal for us, let us know what it is. We are um, going to be here every Thursday. And this is this is the crew, right? Jeff from Equalizer, Lori from NWSL. I don't know what to call you, Lori. <laughs> where, else, where are you? You're everywhere. Um, but that's it for us. I think we should – should we end on A-Rod's she could go all the way, Rod? Goal I think you have out. to with that. I think with that you, have to. you have to. <laughs> you have to. Um, okay, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be here every Thursday. And Lori and Jeff, I will see you guys later. Here we go. Thanks. Here comes A Rod. <laughs>